Hi, this is Scott Trout, CEO of the domestic litigation firm Cordell & Cordell. There are many life changes that can happen after divorce that make it difficult or impossible to uphold requirements of your divorce decree. The orders issued in a divorce are based on the facts presented at that time, but the circumstances used in issuing those orders can obviously change. If you feel a modification to your court orders might be necessary, Talk to us at Cordell and Cordell. Contact CordellCordell.com, 1065 East Hillsdale Boulevard, Suite 310, Foster City, California, 94404. Man, I'm tired. All right, I'm trying to be cool me like too. Brian. Huh? You're trying to be cool like, I'm like me? like, what's he doing? I'm doing Oh, just doing. adjusting the microphone stand. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like sitting in this low seat. Can I have a seat or no? Oh, we don't. Have, we only have two chairs. Anymore. Yeah. No, that's okay. You can do go you grab want, another one. I mean, <laughs> I fine. would stand there, but I wouldn't know what to do. No, nah, it's fine. <laughs> You're listening to The Brian Moot Show with Brad Nolan. My name is Brad Nolan. I'm a dad. I'm a Harley rider. <laughs> Not funny. <laughs> I think it's funny. <laughs> I didn't know you were a Harley rider until I saw the bike. in, in the, Like, I saw the bike again, and I was like, oh, that's right. Brad drives a motorcycle. Brad is so cool, I forgot. <laughs> I do uh, think riding a Harley kind of says a lot about you. Yeah, does it? That it does. I it's like, I feel like edge. I know you better. Like, once you said that, I was like, I get his type. Brian Mood is also in the room. He's a stand-up comedian, has zero kids, rides no Harleys. No, no, but I had a scooter for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Scooters are my jam, man. I, but they're too, I look so oversized on them, I look like a circus animal riding a tiny bike. Back, in, not, like, back when circuses existed, before PETA ruined them. <laughs> I mean, I think those animals have fun performing. <laughs> that's, that's, the hot take. that's the hot take to start the show. Do you know that, you guys know this, but the, the whales at SeaWorld actually enjoy headlining their own shows? Did you guys know that? Uh, we also have Shireen in studio. I've just met her what, five, six minutes ago. That's right. And, uh, and so all I know about her is that she is married and has a couple of kiddos. Isn't that so interesting? I mean, isn't that all you need to know? I mean, why would I need to be anymore? She's oh, a life oh. coach, too. But oh, a, that's right. I was going to say. A life young coach. life coach. Not, not young life. Not a coach for young <laughs> life, but like a young age-wise life coach. So the question is, does that make me suck at life coaching because I have zero experience? Or does that mean I'm like a wise sage that was meant to do it? I mean, what does this really mean, guys? Well, let's play a game. Does Shireen actually <laughs> suck at life coaching? <laughs> Has she lived enough life to even coach yet? <laughs> oh, right. I'm pretty sure the Here answer is no. <laughs> it's funny. You went you went, uh, straight from the minors to the big leagues and no one drafted you. You just decided it. <laughs> like, I'm crushing life so hard, I'm going to tell you how to do it correctly. That's really how social media works, though, which is the cooler part about social media. <laughs> Um, that was amazing, Brian. <laughs> run some life scenarios by Shireen and see what she would do. And like, oh, let's run one by uh, by you for real, Brad. This is an actual, I don't know why I said it like that, Brad. <laughs> Listen up, Brad. I've got actual content here. Uh, this is a real story, man. I've got, so uh, my girlfriend and my buddy Greg live mm-hmm. together in my house in Atlanta. You they, are one pathetic <laughs> loser. I, it is really bad. And right now, so okay, first of all, life coach, was that a good idea? idea to have my friend move into my townhouse while I am in the middle of a long distance relationship? Pretty sure the answer is no. Okay, well. <laughs> I think the life coaches who are better at life coaching than me would say no. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to find out the why next. Here we have Brad Nolan. I think my daughter is probably the coolest thing that I've ever done. And Brian Moot. Kids are monsters, and especially when they're honest with you. Just two boys living in a Barbie world. The Brian Moot Show with Brad Nolan. Two boys in a Barbie world. <laughs> that beat does make me want to twerk, though. I'm not going to lie. Go ahead. Sh- can I? Yeah. Is it, it going to be weird? Is no. my husband going to think I'm really inappropriate? One can here? hope. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're in so much trouble. We're looking for drama. First day on the show, and Shreen's already causing problems <laughs> at home. Uh-oh. All right, so why is it a bad idea for Brian's girlfriend to have moved in with, or for Brian's friend to have moved in with his girlfriend? You know, and you, the caveat is the long distance relationship because that I'm finding is a little bit difficult. But then also now I'm like in caught in the middle of their roommate squabbles. Mm, it's really kind of stinky. I'm not gonna lie. You know, so if I was like a really good coach, I would actually let Brian be his own expert because I don't give people answers. I sort of like facilitate <clears throat> oh, their damn, navigation is, of themselves. That is a genius business strategy. <laughs> So good. And then cash the check. <laughs> You're like a stockbroker who just goes like, well, what do you feel like investing in? You know, be, you, be your own stockbroker. What's the truth for you guys? Because no. if you lose in the stock market but you believed in it, is it really a loss? <laughs> exactly. Well, God, so you, Brad, you're so good. Thanks. 
I think here's the problem with the whole situation is like, so it's like I'm a landlord for two of two uh, tenants, mm. but one tenant I have to always be completely biased for, and she can never be wrong. Well, she can be, <laughs> but I'm not going to tell her she's wrong to her face. I'll just say it on a radio show. But uh, I'll, That's I mean, it, man, game over, man. <laughs> because game I'll, over. I'll be, I'll get in trouble. So here's what's happening: like they both have dogs, and they're both very protective of their dogs. He, uh, he was going to be out all day long, and he was going to be going to a Atlanta Braves game. She asked him because she was busy all day. Hey, I had time to take my dog out and go to the bathroom. Your dog did not go to the bathroom. I didn't have time to let him. You know, really. Rome, so we make sure to take your dog out before. Then she comes home, and his dog, she says, take a took a big old steaming poop right on the wood floor. Very and, nice. And she was like, "That's your dog's poop," and he was like, "No, I took my dog out. That's your dog's poop." And now now they're we, fighting about who pooped. Right. So I got to get like a DNA test to figure out like what. I'm like, did you guys examine? Was there any hair in the poop? But I got to be on her side in this, so then mm-hmm. I got to go, yeah, you know what? He could really grow up and be a better dog owner, and of course it's not your dog. Your dog is completely well-trained. Uh, you know, no, babe, there's no problems. So now I'm, like, in the middle of this situation where I'm trying to be nice to my friend, but my girlfriend's going to kill me if I'm on his side, so I'm not really a good mediator, life coach. I don't really yeah. know what to do. You know what, though? I think in this situation, I don't think you should mediate. I think you should manhandle. I think you need to get in there and be like, yo, here's the deal. This is my house. I love you too in it, and I love you too, but I don't love you too fighting. So stop. Ooh. Just stop. Like, I love you both, but seriously, stop. And um, how about if you guys help each other out, take each other's dogs out? Like, we need a more, like, sort of communal love, kumbaya space happening here because Brian is stressed out and trying to do entertaining radio shows over in L.A., so. I'm turned on by the word manhandled. <laughs> Just want everybody to know that. <laughs> I was, I, did you see the, the slump in my posture? It, when yeah. <laughs> you did look depressed. When Shireen was like, I think you're going to have to get in there and manhandle and tell me. And I'm like, but can I just not do anything? Can I just ignore them and the problem will just go away? Is that? That traditionally is how I handle things. <laughs> Brian. Well, it just seems easier to let, hey, you guys figure it out. You guys, ma- well, I was going to say you guys manhandle each other, but I don't want that. <laughs> I do not want No that. manhandling oh, while yeah. I'm not around. That's not going to work. Uh, I don't know, Brian. You can say I have it all you want, but it's still going to stress you out. Might well, as well go manhandle it. I mean, I just, I'm getting text messages, and, they're in the, and then the other one will say, hey, what did they say about me? And I'm like, oh, nothing really. And they're like, screenshot it and send it to me. And I'm like, this is... <laughs> Completely, this is absolutely awful. I'm, I'm, I'm snitching on you guys now. And mm. then at the end of the day, I want to be like, hey, you're both evicted. Get out. Get out of my house. You know what? This sucks, actually. This reminds me of a situation I had where basically, like, my sister does this sort of property management, helps people invest in houses in South Bend, Indiana. And, like, me and my husband were like, yeah, we're going to do South that. South Bend, Indiana. So they're, like, super cheap. And you <laughs> yeah, get, like, a great is, return on investment. I've been up in Indiana. That is not like <laughs> you a. Just call me a slumlord, okay? <laughs> You're a slumlord in Indiana? I tried to be. Oh, wow. It didn't work. And so, like, my sister was doing her thing, and then my husband, who does construction management, was like, I don't like the way she's doing her thing. She's not giving me enough details. I don't buy it. And then they started to go at it, and I was in the middle like you. And then my mom bought us out. So you just need somebody to, like, buy you out. Oh, so you gotta just have my parents <laughs> swoop in at the last second and save the day? It's so tough, though. When you're between a rock and a hard place, yes. Like, you just need you just need to be out of there. I just Brian. like the fact that you were a slumlord, Shereen. <laughs> I, tr- I, tr- I couldn't even be a slumlord. Like, I attempted. <laughs> you're, you're, you're like, it's a uh, failure at being a you slumlord. You go out there and you're like, um, here's the thing. May I evict you guys? <laughs> oh, okay? no. Don't stress out about it. You're listening to The Brian Moot Show with Brad Nolan. This is the part where we're supposed to have an advertisement. You got one? No. So I just figured we'd do social shout-outs. Brian, what's your social? Uh, at Moot Points on Twitter. Go there. I'm more entertaining on Twitter than I am on the uh, on the old gram. By yeah. the way, I hated people call it the gram. All right. Shireen, where you at? <laughs> at Shireen Thor on Instagram. Thor like with a hammer? Mm-hmm. All right. And I'm at Brad Nolan. That's the end of the first segment we've ever done together. And uh, three, two, one. Nailed it. Got it. Right on the, that's called hitting the post. Boom. <laughs> but now we're over it. <laughs> Brad Nolan is a dad and a Harley rider. Brian Moot is scared of commitment and wears a seatbelt. The Brian Moot Show with Brad Nolan. My name is Brad Nolan. Brian Moot is also in the studio. <laughs> Ideally, my girlfriend is not hearing that. I was going to say, I was like, what? Every rejoin's going to get me in some hot water. <laughs> uh, we also have Shireen Thor in the studio. 
Hi, friends. It's a powerful last name. Yeah. Really, yeah. really shows you mean business. I do. It makes me feel a little <laughs> bit insecure. <laughs> it does, right? Yeah. I always thought because I hated the last name Moot forever when I was a kid. I always thought about like, man, if I married, if I've met a girl with a cool last name, I'd take that. Like, <laughs> if I met a, like a, a a lady with the last name of Thor, you better believe I'd be Brian Thor. <laughs> and then I would drop Brian. I'd just be Thor. I'm just done. Yeah. All right, we got some headlines. So I don't know if you guys remember this story. Uh, it originally happened in 2013. Ethan Couch, affluenza boy. Now in 2013, he was driving drunk and uh, crashed his truck with a bunch of people in the back. Four people were killed. And uh, this dummy was given 10 years of probation only, no jail time. And the reason was because they argued affluenza. They argued that because he'd grown up so rich that he didn't have any idea what, uh, what consequences were. Then this moron went to Mexico with his mom, kind of fled. You're not supposed to do that on probation. Go to Mexico and drink and go to strip clubs. <laughs> and he was given two years uh, only, and now he is out again, and people are pissed again because affluenza is a stupid uh, defense. I don't know. I don't think it is a stupid defense, actually. Seriously? Yeah. Please explain, dear Lord. Here's the thing. When you grow up in a bubble... Hold on. Let me do this. When you grow up in a bubble... <laughs> that made it sound so much more impactful. <laughs> it did. I'm, I'm convinced already. Unfair. <laughs> that bubble... <laughs> Shapes your entire worldview. And if your entire worldview is a sheltered kind of like everything is handed to you on a platter, this is a parenting fail. This is not a fail on the kid. Right. I think that I think he might not have known better. Well, yeah, but you know when you drink and drive and kill four people, it's bad. You are Brad, is one this pathetic loser? <laughs> totally. Brad, is this you being a realist? Because this is like a really like sort of nicey way of being a realist. Yeah, no, I, I think that uh, the kid didn't have a chance, and his parents suck. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds, you know, that's not fair, man. That's like adding the, the uh, law and order, <laughs> everything you say, and it seems like Brad just put the nail in the coffin on the argument. It's like, I got it, because you, you're the one who's handling all the sound effects over there. So do you think this parenting fail happens with people who are poor also? Like, is this a parenting Ooh, fail that has nothing to do with like the reverse status? of affluenza? Where, like, man, I'm so poor, I don't know what consequences well, are either. I mean, if it has nothing to do with being affluent, if it just is a parenting fail, I mean, that's my question. What do you think? I feel like the question was too complicated. And <laughs> he's like, um, stop talking. I'm going to me. move along in my brain. <laughs> he's just going to give you himself guys, the sound you, effect. You, you guys thoughts? do whatever <laughs> you want. <laughs> Your parents suck. <laughs> Brad Nolan is a dad and a Harley rider. Brian Moot is scared of commitment and wears a seatbelt. The Brian Moot Show with Brad Nolan. We already played that one. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. I'm like, why are you really trying to crush me with this? Like, like, hey, Jessica. (laughs) Hey, Brian's girlfriend, if you didn't hear it the first time, Brian's scared of commitment. Check this out. (laughs) I didn't mean it. I'm sorry. Um, story number two. This one's fascinating coming out of a uh, home state of Washington. So uh, a woman named Sally Ashby uh, went to a fertility doctor and uh, she couldn't she couldn't have children. And her and her husband were trying and trying forever. Now, this uh, fertility doctor, Howard Fowler, was supposed to be like the the preemptive, the number one fertility doctor. And he was having trouble um, getting them to uh, getting getting that the whole fertility thing to work. Now, 36 years later. Later, uh, Ashby's daughter did one of those DNA tests, right? 23 and Me, and found out, oh boy, she was not related to her, who she thought was her dad at all. What? <laughs> yeah. And so her mom is like mortified. Imagine you find out that right. the person you think is your daughter's dad is not your daughter's dad. And so they're like, well, the, something must have happened at the fertility doctor's clinic yeah. because this fertility doctor must have like screwed up samples or something. They go and they talk to the guy. He's being the doctor's being all dodgy. Then they have a court subpoena his <laughs> DNA. This doctor impregnated this, this lady with his own DNA because he couldn't get the yeah. the dad's sperm count to work, and so he didn't want to be known as the doctor who couldn't get like he's oh batting a thousand. Gosh. And so he, to protect himself, every time this would happen, like this guy might have like seventy half kids? children. Unbelievable. Is it okay if I twerk every time he does that? Yeah, Yeah, definitely. (laughs) It's better than than Brian or I twerking. I don't know. I'd like to see it. Well, you guys are both parents, Shereen and Brad. Uh, Brad, I think they would be different for a man and a woman, but but what would you do if you found out that your kids were not your kids due to a doctor being creepy and injecting his own... Uh, his own juices. Well, you know what? This question is so much easier for me because they are my kids. 
they're mine, you know? So like me, they, I, they wouldn't be Kenny's, my husband. I'd be like, I'm sorry, dude. Sorry, bro. <laughs> but luckily, they're still mine. I would be very perplexed and upset, but it would be like... See, I would I would think that you're just like, just thank God the doctor was like 6'5 and a good looking doctor. Because what if the doctor was like some just fat troll and you're like, man, you don't need to be spreading your seed. What are you doing? Here's my deal. I think uh, if it was early on, if I found this, if I'm dad, right? Is that that's what you're asking, right? Mm-hmm. I find out my daughter's not my daughter. Yeah. I'm out. If it's early on. <laughs> yeah. If it's early on, bouncing. <laughs> Brad's like, I'm getting a new bike. <laughs> yeah, th- three of them. <laughs> getting that, that I'm, bike I'm I could never. All the money I would have spent on a child, and I'm 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 out. But uh, if we're 36 years in, I'm like, who cares what the DNA is? Whatever. Yeah, if you're the dad. Yeah, yeah, now cares? you're just more annoyed this that is this so creepy. This of you. Hey, this creepy doctor was doing that, though, right? <laughs> Brad, <laughs> ending the argument again. <laughs> All right, and for my, the final news story, this one, ooh, this one's really got me all just fired up. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> and I have plenty of reasons that I get mad at President Trump. Uh, and this one has nothing to do with politics. He has been obsessed over the past week tweeting about Amazon seven times, costing Amazon a 7% uh, loss in stocks. He's, wow. he's tweeting about Amazon uh, ruining the corporate, uh, the working class family, the, the postal service, which I still can't figure out how that makes any sense because because Amazon uses the Postal Service. I know that because the Postal Service relentlessly loses my stuff. I prefer when they use FedEx, but they don't all the time. Um, Here's the thing. Trump's done a lot of things on Twitter, a lot of shenanigans on Twitter, but going after Amazon, I mean, a game changer in terms of just buying useless knickknacks and things I don't need when I'm drunk and and Nerf guns and, and, and throwback Nintendo video games. That This is the first time where I've been like, he's crossed the line. (laughs) <laughs> I love that this is Trump's the one thing. Trump's the line. Yeah. I don't care you. about the misogyny, the cheating <laughs> scandals, the porn stars. I'm like, if you mess with Amazon, you la- you leave Jeff Bezos alone, Trump. I'm not going to do it. I bet I have an obsession with buying from Amazon. Oh, my so I, goodness. I, I, that's what kills me This about is it. so amazing. I have a whole new appreciation for you, Brian. <laughs> for my drunk shopping? <laughs> Brad, are you a frequenter of the Amazon? Of course I am. Uh, There's a box or two at my house every day or two. Um, That's because I have a daughter and a wife that can't stop buying Wonder Woman costumes and such. (laughs) They're so cute, though, man. (laughs) They are. Sometimes I see that stuff. I told my girlfriend that uh, we were at this barbecue a couple weeks ago, and I had this moment where all these little kids were running around, and I was like, I'm finding myself getting baby fever because you can, like, you can, like, stylize these little things. They're just, like, accessories to me. You can (laughs) throw this Wonder Woman costume on her, and then I realized, like, the only reason I don't want to do that is to hit on chicks, and I'm like, this is completely... (laughs) backwards I need to have a doctor come in, a creepy doctor come in, so that Three years into it, I can be like, oh, my God, it wasn't my daughter. And all these chicks I thought I was so cute for dressing up this daughter that wasn't mine. And Wonder Woman costumes just hit them up, slide into their DMs. Okay. I think the commitment phobe thing stands true. My goodness. Oh, yeah. I was mad about the rejoin, and then I just went on that tirade. Oh, this isn't good. <laughs> don't uh, make that a news story. Uh, my, my actual my thing about this is I don't really understand it. Because if I'm Trump and me, by the way. Um, I would say businesses can do whatever they want. In fact, let's just end the postal service. Like that—that that would be my move. Right, survival of the fittest. Yeah, it's like it's like you win because you're the best at this thing, hands down. Nobody cares. Like that's it. That's the rule. So he, the fact that he's going after it doesn't even, it doesn't make sense. Well, to well me. the theory is that he's mad because the Washington Post is owned by Jeff Bezos, and the Washington Post has been going after him and being all fake news, according to him. But it's like the dude talks about ratings all the time, and you only get ratings by getting in Twitter fights with the president when you are a media outlet. So it's like, yeah. buddy, just pick your battles. Every time he does stuff like this, I'm like, I feel like somebody jingling car keys over here so they don't see what they're doing with the other hands. And I'm like, oh, God, he's ba- Stormy Daniels. He's distracting me from another porn star situation. I can't do this. Or he's about to bomb somebody. <laughs> he's got yeah. his hand over the button, everybody. Run. <laughs> the Brian Moot Show with Brad Nolan. Here we have Brian Moot. This better not get me in trouble with my girlfriend. And Brad Nolan. No, my my wife wants to flip the swinger switch. Just two boys without man buns. That's when, us. When is she trying to flip the swinger switch, Brad? Uh, I think she, you got to elaborate on that one. Oh, yeah, she's giving it the 10-year mark. At the 10 years of marriage, we're going to flip that switch and probably 
divorce shortly after that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, I think the swinger thing is a lot better on paper than in practice. Like you know, you like the idea of that, like the romanticized like swinger situation, but then when you see. One, when you see how much easier it is for the woman to land that, <laughs> that right. second relationship, and you're like, man, I'm on every app right now, and every yeah. lady's creeped out. I'll be 40 plus in 10 years. I don't see me attracting much, unless I'm <laughs> successful between now and then. <laughs> then I could, then it'd be fine. It'd be easy for me at that point. Shereen, you're married. How do you guys keep it? Uh, you've been married four years. How do you guys keep the the fire going? <laughs> Is the oh, fire you know, out? Is it a struggle? I'm or? the resident <laughs> keep it hot expert. So, um. Well, you got to have regular sex. That's just, you know, that's just the truth. Once or twice a month? Got to do the sexings. Yeah, yeah. What is I regular mean, sex if for we're, If we're being totally dirty honest right now, we're going to just, like, embarrass me. <laughs> I'm down. We are about twice a week average. That's our- that's Solid. I mean, that's-, that's a solid average. Yeah. I'm, I'm in a long-distance relationship. That's way more than I'm getting it. But really? I, we usually, like- oh, long distance. We can- yeah. But we can backload it when I get right, right. <laughs> for a weekend. <laughs> I feel like I have to turn myself into a sex camel where I just got to do it a bunch and like just hold on to it for the long droughts. <laughs> Brad, uh, you uh, you were your wife was living in Seattle. She just moved down here. Mm-hmm. But you guys have a situation where your daughter is like relentlessly sleeping in your bed, right? Yeah, although I think that ended last night. But yeah, so what was happening was we're in this huge transition of moving, and so my daughter was all whacked out, and she's like, well, I don't understand. Like, why am I not going to school on Monday, and why... Why is all my stuff in a different place? What, but okay, cool. There's a pool, um, and then and like it's like this weird like back and forth <laughs> thing. And then um, she just she just wouldn't sleep in her own bed after we got it set up at the new place. And it was like, dude, <laughs> right? That's a little bit of a struggle. I've seen my wife in a month and a half. I needed to get out, <laughs> move. Yeah, but she did last night. She slept in her own bed, and we had some sex. Yeah, yeah boy. <laughs> <laughs> Hit it with a headline. Um, had you ever looked back at uh, when you were growing up and realized now that you're an adult that you were a total like C blocker on your parents at one, one point in time? Like I remember specifically, I was probably like six or seven, and I don't know if it was a bad dream or if I wasn't feeling well or if I just did the thing where I thought I wasn't feeling well and I was like, I got to go sleep in mom and dad's room. And I remember going down and the door was on their doorknob uh, was locked, and I was like, huh? <gasps> What is go? Oh my god! I'm like, mom, your door's locked. Are you guys okay? Like, I was concerned. I was like, why would this ever be locked? I remember like going in the, and then I sleep in the middle of them, and I'm sure my dad was like, damn it, what are you doing? And I'm just like, hey, mom, I gotta let you know, your door is locked out there. That's very dangerous. Like, I couldn't wrap my head around why they locked the door. Now as a grown up, I'm like, my dad probably want to strangle me. Brian Moot cares about people, sports, and family. Brad Nolan doesn't like to be bothered too much. The Brian Moot Show with Brad Nolan. Nailed it. <laughs> you have a sports story for me. I do, but I think this is more of, of a social commentary, kind of where we've landed now as a society when it comes to social media and success and just crushing people. So, if you didn't watch on Monday night uh, the NCAA championship, it was Villanova versus Michigan. And we kind of had a unique star emerge from this game. It's Dante DiVincenzo from Villanova, and he's unique for a lot of reasons. One, he's a, they call him deceptively athletic, which means white. Um, <laughs> because you don't expect that. I mean, let's just be honest. I played basketball. Awesome. I was not deceptively athletic. But what we call deceptively <laughs> athletic is like, oh, white guy who's like a black dude. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. And he's a redhead. So he's like super white. Oh. He's like as white as he gets. He, had, he came off the bench at 31 points and just some amazingly uh, deceptively athletic plays. <laughs> like blocking shots. Like, oh who my is goodness. this? Who is this white guy? Who do, where does he think he can just start blocking black guys' <laughs> shots? Like, you're, you're upsetting the whole balance of what I thought I had. I thought I'd achieved my athletic su- superi- uh, superiorness. And now I look That's at this word. superior. Yeah. I want to say superiority, but that sounds weird that from out of a word. white guy's mouth. Um, <laughs> <Right. just laughs> I don't feel comfortable with that. And then you know, I, I then I see this guy, and I'm like, I could have been so much better. So here's where it gets fascinating. Villanova blows out Michigan, and everybody's like, this Dante Divincenzo. His nickname's the Big Ragu because he's Italian and he's got red hair and stuff. And and everyone's like, just this is so great. Post game press conference. There's a reporter from USA Today who does the thing we do now to everybody. As soon as you make some sort of big headline and your news, ooh, let's go see what they've tweeted 10 years ago. Oh, man. Let's go see the things that they tweeted uh, years back and see what happened and see if we can tear this guy apart. So apparently... That's it, man. Game Uh over, man. Game over. In 2014... 
uh, DiVincenzo, they, this guy dug way back, like seven, eight years ago. Dante was 14 at the time that he tweeted this stuff. A bunch of, like, uh, he quoted some Meek Mill lyrics using the N-word. Uh, oh, man. Right, which kicks off this discussion of, like, well, I mean, he's a pretty good basketball player. Does that give him a pass? As our resident brown person, Shireen, <laughs> who is Egyptian and can kind of navigate her way through whatever ethnicity she feels like, depending on the day, <laughs> depending yeah. on the news stories. Is, I mean, is that even a thing, getting a pass because you're good at basketball? Well, I mean, it's a good question, but, like, I don't even feel like that's the question. Because I feel like, what does he really need a pass for? He was a freaking kid, and he was quoting lyrics. It wasn't like he was even really using it in derogatory terms. So I don't even, I wouldn't even call it giving him a pass. I feel like it's like, don't waste your time digging up stupid crap that's irrelevant. Right. It's ins- <laughs> And they found some other ones, too, of him, like, some, like, you know, gay jokes and stuff and, like, just weird stuff. But, yeah, like you said, he's 14 years old. So stupid. 14. It's so stupid. And and Villanova came out and said, hey, he was hacked. And they're like, what, in 2014 he was hacked? <laughs> no, but, like, I feel like it's kind of, like, uncomfortable to be white right now. Like, you guys are oh, white. Oh, preach, dude. sister. I mean, I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> it, like, like, Hit I'm it really, with a headline. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, so since I'm brown, I can say this. But you know what I mean? Like, it's like, I, and obviously I feel like we are in L.A. or we're in California. So it's, we're far west, which is different than you know, the middle of the America. So it might be different over there, but I feel like over here, for you guys, it may be a little uncomfortable what, of the to be the white man. Because yeah. of the sense, like, the, it's like we all have to be like, watch out. We, like, I didn't feel comfortable saying superiority. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> I'm like, too white for that. I yeah. Don't, I don't need to lose, I don't need a hashtag movement coming after me right now. It's weird, too, because for me, in my politics, I just feel like people should be aligned with people based on their economic status, not based on their color. Amen, dude. Where's and, the rich people at? Y- right. Because um, that's where I belong. <laughs> I, no, no. You know how people say dress, <laughs> dress for the uh, the job you want. I, I live in the economic bracket I want to be in. <laughs> like that's why I align myself with. Right. Which <laughs> which also is the problem with this country. But at the same time, like I just feel like you're right. It is really weird. It's weird. You find yourself in weird situations, and with just with being dudes as well right now we're like hey yeah. i'm about to crack a joke you know what i'm gonna hold that one i'm gonna hold that one because <laughs> i don't even know who and it's not even anything bad i just don't yeah. know who's gonna take offense to that it, totally. the strange part about uh about the, and i think it's because for so long being a white dude man we got away we had a strong run of getting away with whatever <laughs> right? yes we yes this a, is true a couple a good years. wrong couple we had years. a good good run of just being able to flippantly do whatever the hell we want to do in life and i think the thing about it now is is guys are being over the top sensitive because it's like well uh, you know i don't want to flirt with this girl what if it's harassment and then i think the kind of the the thing that i think the hi- is a little hypocritical about that is depending on how hot the dude is still gives them more leeway to be a creep. You know, like yeah. if an ugly dude is like, hey, good to meet you. They're like, oh, harassment. <laughs> Get out of here. And a hot guy's just like, hey, I want to touch that butt. Oh, man. That's so cute. <laughs> oh, my God. Stop. You're so adorbs <laughs> right now. And now we're going to play a game called Is It Harassment? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what we want to do. Start start that hashtag Me Too movement coming after us. Day one. Fantastic. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I, I, I just think that it, it is, it's a weird thing. Uh, the, the fact that he's 14 should just kind of negate the whole thing. Exactly. I mean, dude, if I even had Twitter when I was 14, I don't know what I would have been tweeting, but ba- it wouldn't have been what I would think now. But also, yeah. back when he was tweeting that stuff in 2011, Twitter was just like a, not even a thing. It was, it wasn't your, it was just a thing people were like, yeah, just, uh, just fire off this thought into oblivion. No one's going to read. Now it's your permanent record. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're Donald Trump. Then it's like, eh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, so I Brian felt like Moot that is way. a stand up comedian. Brad Nolan is a stand up dad. The Brian Moot Show with Brad Nolan. Geico presents Yikes. Another voicemail from your roommate. Sup, Rumi? Hey, a pipe burst in the basement. It's completely flooded. Anyway, I called for someone to fix it, but in the meantime, I was thinking we could finally have that indoor pool party we've always wanted. I got some cool swan floaty things already going. Could you pick up some chips on your way home? Later. The GEICO Insurance Agency could help keep your personal property protected. Like if your roommate isn't the brightest pool float in the flooded basement. Visit GEICO.com to see how easy it is to switch and save on renter's insurance. Yo, if we go to 7-Eleven right now, we can be back in time for the game. I don't know, man. I don't want to miss kickoff. Okay, but Red Bulls are two for $5 right now when I use my 7-Eleven app. Dude, but kickoff. But how are we going to stay on top of our game while watching this game if we're not on that 7-Eleven game? I don't know. How? 
Keep up, dude. Two for five Red Bull with my 7-Eleven app. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I'm feeling you now. Thank you. 7-Eleven. Be game day ready. Plus tax where applicable. Valid at participating locations.